There are three common spine surgery choices for pain relief from neck disc herniations. Let me explain them to you. The first one is a microdiscectomy of the disc in the neck. And that's when a chunk, a small piece, that's why micro, microdiscectomy, a small piece of the disc is removed. And it's usually the piece right by the nerve that's being impinged. Because people with neck disc herniations, of course they have neck pain, but it gets really bad when it starts to shoot down from the neck into the shoulder, arm, even all the way down into the hand. This discectomy procedure takes the part of the disc away that's pushing on the nerve and that can bring relief. The second is probably the most common surgery done and this is called an anterior cervical discectomy and fusion. And this is where the disc is completely removed from the spine and then they put some bone in there that they harvest from your hip. So they have to go down into your hip and do a surgery on your hip to take fragments of bone out that they're going to insert where your disc was and then they're going to put a metal plate that's the fusion part to attach the bones together and hold the the bones from the hip in place with the hopes that it'll all heal down and fuse into one single bone they're fusing two cervical bones two neck bones together so that there's no more motion and no more disc that could pinch the nerves. And then number three, this is the lesser common of these, is a cervical disc replacement. And this is when an artificial disc is inserted in here. They have to first take out the disc that's part of the problem. So they cut through bone, remove the disc, and then they have an artificial disc that they'll insert there. And the difference between this and doing a fusion is that the artificial disc is theoretically supposed to preserve some motion in your neck so that you're not fused because very often a side effect of the fusion is that because the level that's fused where they take away all the motion, it doesn't move anymore. So it causes the level above or below to begin to move excessively and that can be problematic. So if you can preserve some motion with an artificial disc, then there's less chance you're going to injure the area above and the disc below. Now this is the most experimental of all of these procedures, so it's the least done, but those are the three most common surgical procedures done for cervical disc herniations. Now in most cases, when it comes to cervical disc herniations causing neck pain and arm pain, surgery is preventable and truly the best option. If you can avoid surgery altogether and get your neck feeling normal again, restore motion, get rid of that pain, numbness and tingling that can go all the way down into your hands, then that's a win for you. That's a very good situation if you can avoid a surgical procedure and avoid the complications of it. In most people, you need to address an underlying root muscle imbalance where certain muscles in the neck are too strong and they're adding compression to the spine and other muscles are too weak and they're not in a position to help decompress the spine. It's usually the shrugging muscles that are the biggest problem. The shrugging muscles are too weak and so they start to sink down and with the weight of the arms it pulls down and adds compression and getting those shrugging muscles stronger helps to get the neck offloaded in the long run. I've got more specific help on this in a playlist called cervical disc herniation help. It's linked in the description below. Go check that out so that you can get exercises and more advice and more information about how to help a cervical disc herniation without surgery. Hey, please give us a thumbs up if you thought this video was helpful and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the future videos that we post. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.